So we're going to start clapping our hands for the headliner. The funniest man in America, my brother, Mr. Black Ron. Yeah, I had to wear an R&B jacket on y'all ass. Had to wear one of them Lee Singer jackets on y'all ass. Girl, that's church wool. That's Easter Sunday wool. Feel that. Come get you. Look, look, that ain't no bullshit, goddamn me. I got couch cushion on the inside of that motherfucker, girl. Girl, come here and feel that goddamn couch cushion on the inside of that jacket, goddamn. Yeah, look at that. That's the grandmama Devan, goddamn me. That's how you show niggas you've been doing something with your money. You go buy a jacket they can't find. Took 18 months for this jacket to get her off Wish. <laughs> Bought this jacket in the pandemic. I forgot I ordered this goddamn jacket. Pops called me, told me, man, there's a package in the house from Malaysia? I said, don't open that. That's the feds. That's a trick. Don't go for that, my boy. We don't know nobody in Malaysia. We ain't selling no bundles or nothing, nigga. We, don't you open that. I forgot the box was at his house. That nigga called me. Hey, man. When you gonna come get all this goddamn mail? Parents be exaggerating. All this goddamn mail was that box. My voter registration card Two letters. One of them was junk mail, and one of them was Sally Mae trying to get some of her money. So I, fuck that bitch, goddamn me. I went outside, I took a hatchet, and I opened the box just in case it was something in there. And I watch TV. Everybody that get poofed in the face, they sit the box down, lean over the box, open the top of the box, open it, poof, in your goddamn face. So I linked the box on the goddamn side, cut the top off the box that way, opened it down to the ground. That way, if anything poof, poof it's gonna poof on the ground. Cause I don't think they ever have a sideways trigger just in case it's a smart nigga and it'll come out, poof, poof, no, we still got you. I don't think anthrax move that fast. If I see it come out, I can get the fuck out of the way. I, if I can avoid a squirt, I know I can avoid an anthrax powder. Oh, I'm the only nigga ever weaved a coochie ski. Oh, Mayweather, I shoulder rolled that motherfucker. What? Open the jacket up. Open the box up. It was my R&B jacket. And I, I, I'm proud of myself. Because I ordered it in my size. Which is hard to do on Goddamn me. Y'all didn't order from them goddamn people. They just be just making up a goddamn size. I don't know who buy it. They be talking about. They say, what size you going to need? First thing I ordered off a graphic t-shirt. It was Jimi Hendrix playing the guitar, Stevie Wonder on the drums. No, back in the day, real nigga shit, Jimi Hendrix used to do session work. For Motown, he used to play behind the Isley Brothers and shit. So they got this picture, this jam session with Jimi Hendrix on the guitar and Stevie Wonder on the drums. I was going to kill it with that motherfucking T-shirt. I got a nice little collarbone, shoulder muscle, little section. The right T-shirt, I be looking all right in. And they said, what size shirt you need? And it was a V-neck shirt. I said, let me go and get the XL. I'm going to get a 1X. So I got a little room in it. That's what I thought. Let me get the one X. So I'll have a little bit of room in it. They mailed me a one T. This motherfucker was only missing snaps on the bottom. I, who little ass shirt? Is this for what? What nigga is walking around in China telling people he extra large with a body this goddamn small? Wasn't no way I could have put that damn shirt on and lived. 
That shirt would have choked the shit out of me. As soon as I passed it over my neck, get a bitch ass nigga. Yeah, you knew better. You knew better. And, and, now, and now you're going to suffer the consequences. Live with your choices and die with them. They'd have found me with half that shirt around my goddamn neck and shit. And you know, when you, I don't know any of y'all ever like almost drowned or got caught in some shit or like barely made it. You be fighting your way out. And you don't give a damn how you look when you fighting your way out some shit. You don't give a damn what happened when you fighting your way out some shit. You could be to kick yourself out one of your shoes. Your pants and slid down a little bit. Y'all watch World Star Fights. One titty always pop out when them girls is fighting. Because when your head go down and your arms go up, something bound to happen that you ain't got no control over. And they fuck around and find me with my pants down a little bit top part of my boot out. I didn't kick one of my damn shoes off. Got this damn shirt around one side and around my neck. They like, oh yeah, he was on some freaky shit, yeah. Yeah, he was into that autoerotic asphyxiation. He didn't like choke himself while he played with himself. Yeah, he died being nasty. That's something we do in the black community, boy. We will kink shame your ass. If you do some shit that everybody don't do, oh, you nasty. We don't even say freaky no more. We just, ooh, ooh, you nasty. They, people don't even say shit out loud. You just got to catch people off guard. I knew some nasty shit came out, and I thought it was disgusting. And we was just talking about nasty shit. We was sitting on set, and we was talking amongst ourselves as regular grown folks be talking. And they was like, yeah, because that shit is nasty. And I was like, you know what else is nasty? They was like, what? I was like, I was watching a porno the other day. And the nigga grabbed the bitch by her jaw and spit in her mouth. And that shit was disgusting, right? And nobody said nothing in the damn room. And I was like, y'all nasty to the motherfucker, man. Y'all be into that nasty shit. And I was so judgmental. I had called them nasty four times in a row. At that point, they were shamed. They was like, well, I mean, one of them stood up for herself. She was like, hold on. You're not going to kink shame me. I like what I like. If I can suck a nigga dick and swallow his nut, he can spit in my mouth. If I can swallow your nut, I can swallow your spit. I was like, well, touche, bitch. You got a point. You got a point right there, goddamn me. You got a point. Because if they ask me which one I want to swallow first, spit going to be on the top of the list. I don't know what y'all got on y'all list, but <laughs> y'all nasty. <laughs> I thought about it. I guess I guess it's the action of spitting that's nasty to me. Like if we was fucking and, and your your face was right in front of my face and my mouth was open and your mouth was open, and after going. <sighs> for like 85 times in a row, some juice had accumulated in your mouth and you slobbed into my mouth, like that wouldn't disgust me. But for you to gather everything together, in my mouth, bitch, I'm gonna fist fight your ass. Butt naked in this bed. It's gonna turn into the UFC in this motherfucker and no man shall survive but me, bitch. We fighting to the death in this motherfucker. And I'm going to be holding your still dead body when the police walk in. And they were like, sir, what did she do? That bitch spit in my mouth, huh? I'm going to be still naked. Still snatching her body around. Open my mouth. Swab it. I didn't even swallow until y'all got here. Swab it and see once you get her DNA. That bitch spit in my mouth. That's self-defense. She nasty. I'm just saying, how we skip over swallowing that to spit in my mouth? You can't spit in my mouth. My ancestors won't allow it. 
No, they marched and shit and uh, sung songs and bled and died and got spit on and called nigga for me to, what? I bet you my dick won't stay hard. Spit on me. Spit on me and see if I'm still talking about fucking after that. Yeah, yeah. You can you can you can fuck this dead dick. Then you you a genius and a miracle worker. You get it how you live. But at that point, it's rape because I'm no longer involved. They told me spitting on somebody is assault. So now you didn't spit on me and rape me, bitch. That's a capital offense. They gonna get your ass life, ho. And I want you to do every day. Day for day, you got me fucked up. I don't want you to see another free day because I don't want it to happen to nobody else. You've been out here spitting in niggas' mouths all willy-nilly. I can't be the first, Your Honor. She did it too cavalier. She had no trepidation whatsoever. She, she quickly and easily spat in my mouth, Your Honor. And I want her to go away. Spit in Big Bertha mouth off in that jailhouse and see how she like it. I mean, a nigga would never. That's got to be a woman's idea. You know how I know? Because women say crazy shit. When you get by like six and a quarter inches in off in their coochie, that unlock the Tourette's muscle off in their body. You go six and one quarter inches in their coochie and make a hard right. And, and all of a sudden, she going to say the craziest shit you ever fucking heard. In your life, you just been tanning that ass. So she, oh, oh, that's good. Yeah, right there, right there. You go in and hit that right. She take the kids outside and baptize them and give them poke chops. You like, what? What the fuck? What the fuck? But uh, you a real nigga, so you don't stop. You like, let me see if that shit fluke. I'm gonna hit it again. You go by the ass. Feed them poke chops and gab sauce. Be sure you took me in that night. Like, this bitch crazy than a motherfucker, boy. Y'all got a little muscle in your coochie. Go in and hit a hard right out of nowhere. She gonna say something you ain't never heard, goddamn me. You got your mama ears and your daddy's eyes. Like, what? None of this is sexy. What? Just hush. I found out why women don't really let you know how she really get down in bed. Fuck all that she did some nasty shit with you. She was just trying something. Nigga, you might be a nigga that don't count. You did the nastiest shit with her ever, nigga. You played in her booty. She sucked your finger. Y'all tongue kissed after that. Nasty, nasty. Yeah. Now, nah, don't kink shame. Somebody into that right now. Somebody was like, and then what? Yeah. The rest of y'all here like, ah! Somebody was like, yeah. That's what we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You talking about talk, Black Run. But she did that shit with that nigga in Miami at her homegirl wedding. And nigga, you don't count. She don't even save ass that shit to her file, nigga. She quick delete that shit, nigga. Go straight to the recycle bin. It didn't happen. You know how a woman really let you in? Look at all the niggas leaned in. He's like, where, where he, he been learning something? Where you been? No, he always smart. That nigga always smart. He finna say something deep. No, when a woman truly let go in front of you, that's when you really in, in. Fuck with all that nasty shit, little outfit she wore, freaky dicky, hotel room, out of town, ate your balls while you was driving. None of that matters. When she unleashed, let go, truly be herself in the bed, that's when you in, in. And most women are not proud of that person that they turn into when they really let go and bust a real nut, it's not cute. It's not sexy. There's nothing attractive about it. And if you don't like her for real, for real, you'll fuck around and stop liking her 
if you see the person and the animal that she turned into when she really, really let go for real, for real. Nigga, just listen to the moans. When a woman truly let go, nigga, the moans are going to hit her tone in a decibel range that she ain't normally capable of. And because she's at a state of relaxation, she's vibrating at her lowest point. So that means that that voice is going to be deep, not high. In other words, if she in the bed sounding like Michelle A, she is putting on a show for your ass, my boy. Oh, that is so good right there. I love you, right? Oh, oh, it's so good. Oh, 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 oh. Listen to the moans. When it get real, all of a sudden that shit go, ah, ah, to, uh, 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 shit. Uh, my boy. My boy, ah, uh -huh. oh we, well, damn, well, all right tonight, yes, sir. Oh, okay, okay, all right, all right. Yo, who the fuck is this in the bed? Barry White with titties in here. Most women grunt when they come for real. Sound like she in a fight and that nigga is hitting her with hellacious body blows. And he is, god damn me. That nigga is Mike Tyson to her goddamn guts, nigga. She, yeah, if she don't never stop and breathe and swallow, nigga, you ain't hitting that shit for real. She in there pretending, my boy. Niggas, on the other hand, our nuts always telegraph themselves. We can't hold a nut in to save our life. And you'll give away the first sign. Your shoulder will shimmy for no reason, like you in a kappa strut. You was doing good. All of a sudden, you just hook it bug one time for no reason. And your woman know you. She know all the telltale signs. She look up and say, you finna nut, ain't it? And you be like, no, -uh, no, I'm not, uh-uh. Yes, you is, stupid ass boy. Yeah, 18 strokes left, and she know it. You try to slow down like them at the same 18 strokes that you giving her ass. You gonna give them to her slow, stroke by stroke, like they're gonna make them count. No, sir. The older you get, the more you can't lock out. When a woman come, she lock out. When a nigga come, we let loose. Everything, won't nothing be together. It, won't. it look like them things at the parking lot, used cars. Won't nothing be together. Won't nothing be together when you. And I wish, I wish I could stand up here in front of y'all and tell y'all that I had the same upper body strength that I had when I was 22, fresh out of college, knocking their ass down, just running through them. I was a young juggernaut. There was no culture that could not be taken down. I was in these streets using my powers for evil. I was taking them all down. And every nigga know what I'm talking about. Every nigga got that lockout stroke where you lock your whole body out and you push your chest muscles forward and you tighten up on your toes. And you could do that shit for about 18 hours straight. Bop, 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 bop. You just look straight ahead. You don't look at her. You don't look to the left. You don't look to the right. You just look straight the fuck ahead. Wall, headboard, whatever that is in front of you. Bop, 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 bop. You just lock out. You can tear that ass up till you get to the promised land. As a young nigga, when you got all your upper body strength, I'm two and a half years from 40 now. And the other day, my elbows went out on me. <laughs> Had me looking like a whole weak ass nigga out here. I went into my, I, I went into straight into the lockout. I locked out on the ass. Yeah. Bop, 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 bop. And I was tearing that ass up. And then I felt my shoulder hucky buck. So I was like, hell no, nah, I'm gonna super lock. I'm gonna lock my back. Ma, 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 ma. Nigga, I 
all of a sudden my whole elbow. <laughs> Nigga, I'm trying to mop, 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 and my shit just yaga, 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 yaga. I'm in there looking like I'm trying to stomp the yard in that cooch. I'm in that motherfucker. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hitting dance moves in this coochie. She said, What is that? I said, Bitch, you got served. That's what that is. Yeah. I had to do it for a little saint, ho. When I was a young nigga, I didn't even have to put my whole hand down to lock out. Real nigga didn't need his whole hand to lock out. Nigga, dust the tips, nigga, two of them, three-point stands, these two fingers, and my toes, nigga. And I'm in there, I don't need nothing, nigga. I remember one time, I would've been with no hands. I just, you and my shit straight out, nigga. Locked out, nigga, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if I'm gonna be romantic, I got to hold myself up on something. Otherwise, what you finna get is body to body. Not finna tear my rotator cuff up. Trying to please this coochie. Ma'am, I'm finna lay on your body and breathe in your face. I'm talking about I'm finna be chest to chest. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'ma still say yeah, because I'm still yachting. I'm still yachting, bitch. You ain't gonna my yacht. I'm just saying my upper body. Y'all ain't got it all neither, ladies. Goddamn lower body go out quick, don't it? It ain't, it ain't just the knees. It be the thighs and the ankles and the calf muscles. All this shit go out. Her whole grasshopper muscle go out. Nigga, she ain't got none of these no more. You want your lady to have both her legs bent fucking you, she better be in Captain Morgan position, nigga. She better have one of these up here in a slight stoop like that. Fucking her in the paper clip is what I call that position right there. You open up a paper clip, that's what that look like. At least niggas will pretend we still can do some shit. A woman will let you know quick. She'd be like, well, what you want? He'd be like, I want you to get up top and bounce on this dick. She'd be like, boy. <laughs> bounce, boy. Because <laughs> who got to be at work tomorrow is me. I'm not finna bounce on shit. Now, is you going to get this pussy or no? He's like, damn, bitch. What if bouncing kept me up? What if that's what I needed in here tonight? Mm -mm, ain't going to be no bouncing. There ain't gonna be no bouncing. Look at the conversation going around the room right now. All the women discussing what they don't do. Yeah, and, and, and since we're on the subject, we're not gonna stand up and hit it from the back neither, nigga. Y'all get lazy, boy. The older a woman get, and it's not even so much the older. The more bills a black woman can pay by herself, the longer her list of I ain't gonna do gets. Y'all don't know how soft y'all make a nigga dig when we done got all that hard work. We done did everything. We done been a gentleman. We smell good. We look good. Conversation was great. Got you to the crib. Your kids was at their daddy house. You not on your cycle. And it's a pay week. Bitch, do you know how calculated I got to be to triangulate that fucking weekend? Did all that goddamn hard work. You come in the house taking your wig off. Look at Let me tell you what we not going to do. You not finna nut in my mouth. You not finna play with my booty. You not finna be choking and spanking on me. You not finna be calling me out my name. I don't do nothing. You're like, damn, bitch, I'm finna leave. <laughs> Telling me all this shit you don't do. Well, what do you do? You sound like Donna McClurkin. Tell me what do you do? 
giving my all and seems like it's not. <laughs> I'm not going to fuck that gospel song up like that. It's in your head now. It's too late. <laughs> Women will change the mood on you quick. You got to remember that, fellas. It's not just about your dick. You got to make sure your breath don't stink. You got to make sure your fingernails is trimmed and ain't no dirt under them. You got to make sure them is some fresh ass sheets and the thread count is high enough to where she don't be like, where you got these sheets? And apparently, now you got to go ahead and get the extra Pandora or the YouTube Red so don't know commercials. Fuck the vibe up. You got to go ahead and subscribe, goddamn me. Because apparently, the algorithm know you in there getting some coochie. And that motherfucker will play a STD commercial. In between two fuck songs, though. That's Just got through listening to a fuck me down jam. You eating the coochie. You be like, yeah, girl, my turn. You lay down. As soon as she put the mouth on the dick, you be like, genital herpes is taking over the community in a widespread rampant rate. Have you been tested? For more information, visit our website. At Siri, shut your bitch ass up. Alexa, stop hating. <laughs> the one that fucked me up, boy. Right soon, the girl asked me to do something with her booty. She was like, I want you to do a little something with my booty. What you want me to do with the booty? She like, Go on, get in that booty a little bit. Go on, get in that booty a little bit. You got in that booty a little bit. As soon as I got off in that booty a little bit, it was like colon cancer is taking over the black community. I pulled my finger out like she had it in there. I, like I didn't want to get the cancer on my finger. Like, mm, it might be in there. Let me get my, let me get my finger out of there. I probably got that colon cancer on my finger. Or you done decided you're going to go raw tonight. Sushi gang. I'm finna slide off in that coochie the way the Lord made it. Regular. I'm gonna peel this potato, slide it in there, let her bake it. And then you be like, I'm taking Travuda with prep. My partner has HIV, but I don't. You be like, uh uh, uh uh. Unless this bitch got a fistful of them on that nightstand, I don't, I don't like no music. I don't want to hear nothing in the background. I don't want to hear nothing. I don't want no sounds. Hush. I don't even like the fan. Because if you don't clean your fan, your fan make noise. And that beat and set a goddamn rhythm. Black people, we rhythmic. We come straight from the motherland. The first communication was sound. We dance through everything. And I'm in there trying to establish my own. I'm in there, yacht, ma, yacht, yacht, yacht. Quiet. But then your ceiling fan in there, you can do, 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 you can do. Now I'm in there, you can do, 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 you can do. Because the damn ceiling fan decided he the damn DJ and he set tempo on here tonight. I wanted to go slower than that. I wanted to be in here. Now, you can do, you can do, you can do, you can do. I don't want to hear nothing in there. I don't like it if you got your house set to automatic. Just let your air blow all day. I don't like hearing it come on and go off. Because you don't know it's off until it go. Like, you ain't even noticed that it was on until it go off. And if you got one of them old air conditioners or, God forbid, a window unit, when that bitch go off, it sound like an old Chevy cutting off. Like, 
And when your papa used to pull up to the house and shit, you fucking all of a sudden, you're Got this old motor in the goddamn window. I don't like babies after they get two. Soon as they able to look at you and say, huh, like they ain't hear what you said. Ah, huh? I said, I fucking I. You heard me. And you understood me, goddamn me. Soon as they get old enough to look and see if you looking at them before they do some shit. That's when I don't like your goddamn kids. I don't want them back in my life until they about 12 or 13. Then they old enough to hit. And I can beat your baby. Because after that, you able to have an opinion, formulate sentences and shit. You got a whole little old mind going on. Think back to when you was 12 and 13. You was not the kid that they played like you was. You, you had a whole little enterprise going and shit. How many of y'all had a boyfriend, ladies, at 13? Don't tell the truth. Your mama ain't in here. You thought you did. When your mama found out, she said, oh, she called herself having a boyfriend. No, you didn't call yourself nothing. You, that shit was official like a motherfucker. If y'all could have if y'all could have went to the courthouse and I, I now pronounce the boyfriend and girlfriend, that shit would have been on papers. Official. Should be real. So just as real as when a, a, a teenager decides he's going to shoot up a school or kill a parent. But you're going to say, oh, no, they 12, they 13. They didn't mean that. That was just, they was just going through something. Hell, no. Mm -mm. You walk in the house with this gun and you point it at me, you better, you better not miss. But not the fuck, miss. Sir, what happened? A pistol whooped my own child to death. Why would you do it, motherfucker? Upped it on me. And what did you do? I euro stepped, and apparently his ass only been at the range where the targets be still the whole time. He didn't have no real life experience. Swam up under him, grabbed him, pressure on the thumb. He let it go like a pussy. I knew he would. I've been his daddy his whole life. I know he can't fight. But I can. I said, why'd you beat him to death? Because that nigga came in this hole with a pistol. I told you the beginning of the story. At the beginning, what the fuck was I supposed to do? Snatch it out and say, now let that be a lesson to you? Hell no. Nah. Shit, I beat the shit out of him so my other kids won't ever try that shit. I don't understand how a motherfucker be afraid of some shit they made. Or some shit they feed, for that matter. Yeah, because you could be a stepdaddy or a stepparent and shit, or even own a dog. How, how you afraid of your own goddamn dog? He, he don't want to go outside right now. Shit. That nigga got a key. That's the only motherfucker gonna tell me what they don't wanna do in my goddamn house is somebody who can also lock doors in this motherfucker. And when it come to your kids, as soon as they old enough to carry a house key, how many bills you put in on this bitch? Wish the fuck I would. This is not a democracy in this motherfucker. And I say it, and you gonna do. My mama put me out in second grade just to show me she could. I'm talking about put me out, out. Like she wasn't even playing. And was like, and you can't take nothing I bought. No, you don't want to abide by the rules in my house. You must be grown. And a grown man fend for himself. Now keep in mind, my father didn't get home from work yet. <laughs> this nigga still at work. My mom put me out. Four o'clock in the afternoon. Put me smoothing the fuck out. And I didn't know nowhere to go. So I just sat on steps in front of our door. <laughs> Nigga, I'm in second grade. Where I'm going? 
no motherfucking where. And it just so happened to be daylight savings time. And what happens during daylight savings time, children? It get dark early. It get middle of the night dark when the night is still young, goddamn. It ain't even nighttime, nigga. It's, it's evening. And it be in the middle of the night dark outside. Now, my dad would get home and work around about 6.30, 6.45. But in the meantime, my mama then called him, filled him in on what's going on, how the fuck she feel about it, and what was the resulting outcome. And I'm just thinking, like, I just got to tough this shit out till my daddy get home. Kind of like that first time you went to jail and you thought Bell was coming fast. He was like, oh, this ain't shit. I'm, I don't want your sandwich. I know Bell coming. Don't worry about it. No, I ain't going to be in here very long. No, I don't need your blankets. No, I won't be in here very long at all. You wake up the next morning hungry, tired, shoulders hurt, cold. You know, got your arms and your shirt and shit. Nigga, wake you up. Hey, it's breakfast time. Care folk, you jump in the line quick. You, you get that banana and them Cheerios. You don't even like now one of them, but you eat the shit out of them. They didn't broke you. Now, now you know. Ain't no help coming. And my mama was messy when I think back on it. Because more grown folks than normal came by our house and passed our stairs that day. We normally get one visitor a week, maybe. Three, four of my mama friends and grown folks that live around the neighborhood came by. I'm just sitting on the steps in shambles. You know, when you've been crying so long that you through crying with your body just sitting there. <laughs> I'm just sitting there in shambles, just. <laughs> Lady lived two buildings down. She come by, baby, what's wrong? I heard you crying. All the way down there, the bitch. No, you didn't. I wasn't crying that hard. Because when you're in shambles, you don't even cry loud. I say, mama, ma, 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 mama, 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 put, put me out. She said, hmm, what you do, baby? <laughs> Bitch, you saw me struggle through that sentence. I'm not finna, not finna run down today's events. Leave me alone, goddamn me. Lady lived downstairs actually did hear me crying. She come out on the stairs to see what the matter is. My mama opened up the kitchen window, leaned out. Leave that nigga alone. He all right. I put his ass out, and out is where the hell he going to stay. Shut the window. I could smell she was frying pork chops in that little bit of time. Pet ass. No pork chops is my favorite. How you going to fry my favorite after I done got evicted? Side, nighttime coming. 6.30, 6.45, somewhere around there. Uh, it was in the middle of the night at 6.45. <laughs> it was cold. It was dark. I was lonely. <laughs> Here come my pops. I hear his, hear his truck pull up. Boom, he come walking down the sidewalk. And I didn't, I didn't run out to him. I sat there in my shambles because I thought I was going to gain some sympathy points. Because the, the hallway of the apartments is lit up. He could see me when he pulled up. You see your oldest son over here in shambles. I'm in full shamble shake. You see me. And could got out the car, walked all the way up the walkway, got to the stairs. Said, let me get by you, man. Hey, y'all think I'm bullshitting. Hey, my pop's a cool-ass nigga. Anybody ever met my dad and know my pop's one of the coolest niggas you ever want to meet? We talking about 30 years ago when he was even cooler than that. You talking about a nigga in his mid-40s. He come up the stairs, fresh off his work, 
at the bank job. My daddy got on a good ass, got a good job outfit. Got the blazer, white shirt, tie slacks, got the goddamn wang tips on. They might have been snake skin. So my, my daddy hit them stairs like that as he come up them stairs. And that nigga, he was hitting them slow as he got up to me. And they got in front of me. And bring ain't breaking stride. Let me get by you, man. Scooted me over and went on up the stairs. Broke the stairs and went in the house. And in my shock, I let that nigga get by me. I was like. Eh, too, papa. And then he didn't look back at me. And then he walked in the house, closed the door. Locked it. And when my daddy get home, the second lock get locked. So I heard that hobo. Bah! And then just to be petty, I heard that nigga put the chain on. Slow. He put it in there like he was struggling. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Sat out there, smelt my whole family in there eating pork chops. <laughs> Mashed potatoes, green beans, biscuits. I smelt all that when, when he opened the door. It all came out, out the door. She done put together my whole favorite meal. This lady is a worker of the devil. <laughs> my mama came out the house, slammed the door real fast. About 10, 15 minutes later. Like she had forgot something in the car. She ran down the stairs real fast. Got to the bottom of the stairs and said, bring your ass on. I ain't finna wait on you. Like, like she told me I was going with her. And I hopped up like a fool. Followed my mama who had put me out. Got in the car with her. Didn't know where we was going. Mama drove me by the shelter. You must have been in the car. <laughs> My mama said, you see off in there? Right now they got kids off in there who is good kids who mind and do everything right and they still ain't got nowhere to live. Then went downtown, drove past the bridge, and showed me some shit under the bridge, homeless people and shit. So we didn't did this whole scary straight Uber ride <laughs> all through the city. We get over to her, one of her best friend's house. We go off in the house. That was my mama friend, Miss Sharon. And Miss Sharon had also cooked. But one thing that I remember, now she ain't cooking no pork chops. That hoes wasn't working together like that at a concert. <laughs> Damn, what y'all done went through? She also cooked pork chops. It was a plan. No, I forget what Miss Sharon cooked, but I do remember that Miss Sharon had made carrot cake with the buttercream icing. I fucks with it. Especially when they got them fat ass raisins off in it. I ain't even know carrot cake had carrot in it as a child. I just thought that's what they called it. Because I couldn't taste it. That orange shit was carrot. I could see orange shit off in it, but I thought there was just little bits of deliciousness. <laughs> but I was Miss Fa I was Miss Sharon's favorite. So when she seen me, she was like, hey, my baby, I made some carrot cake. You want a piece? And my mom was like, hell no. <laughs> hell no, he can't have no damn cake. Which offended Miss Sharon, what you mean her favorite can't have no case? She's, why? What do you do? Don't tell her what you did. <laughs> and when somebody say tell them what you did, they don't mean tell them what you did. They mean tell them what your charges are. What have you been charged with, nigga? So I had to run it down like how that she had run it down. I was disrespectful. Man. I don't appreciate Everything that my mama do for me, I'm ungrateful. I won't mind. And I'm not being a good example for my brother and my sister. Now, you'd have thought I said, I had four white women duct tape in a trunk. I had six pounds of weed on me. 
two things in that pen, no, six weapons. This is my second strike, and I don't give a fuck. Miss Sharon sat back from the table and crossed her arms and was like, what? Not my baby. And for some reason, that shit broke me like Miss Caroline Mason. At the first 48, I was back in shambles all over again. <laughs> Nigga, I'm standing there in the kitchen, full shamble. I didn't think I had no shamble left. Thought I was all shambled out on the stairs. <laughs> Nigga, I don't know what happened. We went off in there and uh, Miss Sharon gave me some some philosophical conversation about something. But at that point, any nigga who been in jail know the right answer is yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Whatever they're telling you. Mm. When can I go home? I just won't go home. Well, I, I sign what you need me to sign. I'll be good, I swear. We got to the house. My mama had saved one po child. One little scoop of potatoes, one biscuit on the back of the stove. But you know, like I know, when you let it sit out, it get room temperature cold. Where it, it, it ain't cold like refrigerator, but it damn sure ain't warm enough to eat. It's greasy. I sat there in the dark in the kitchen and I ate that pork chop and them potatoes and that hard ass biscuit like I was a free man and that was that was the best meal I'd ever had in my whole fucking life, nigga. I know one thing. After that, my mama didn't have no more problems out of me until I started helping her out with bills and she still acting like she want to put a nigga out. And I was like, I was like, I tell you one thing, you can put me out, but you better not cook them pork chops that I bought. <laughs> them my pork chops. You know, when we get grown, we can't never tell our parents nothing that, that we did for them. You know, your parents can't never, quote unquote, technically, for real, for real, borrow no money from you. They be like, let me hold some money for about two weeks. I'll get back to you when I get my check. Whatever you want to, whatever they want to hold, you better not have that whole amount. Have half of that. <laughs> they call you like it's an emergency. Hey, what you doing? Nothing. Um, you sitting down, you quiet, you can hear me? Yeah. Take me on speakerphone. You ain't got me on speakerphone, do it. No, mama was wrong. Send me four hundred dollars right quick. I'll send back to you in about two weeks. Zell it to me right quick right now. Go on. Go on, Zell it to me right quick so I can get it right now. He's like, are you at the casino or the trap house? What? Why the sense of urgency, ma'am? Mama I ain't got four hundred dollars. What you got? I, I might got a hundred or two. Well, go on, send me that. Go on, send me that. I'll get it back to you as soon as I, oh, yeah, because that ain't even the whole four. Yeah, I can get that back to you quicker. I don't know what's quicker than never, but I guess that would be anything. Now, I happened to be light on some funds one time. My mom got a credit card in her name that I use in case of emergency. Now, I'm a real grown man. I only use it in case of emergency. I was out of town. The hotel I was checking in didn't accept the cash app card. I didn't have enough money on my debit account to cover the stay and the incidentals. I used the credit card. I got to lay down. There ain't gonna be no problem. She called me two hours after I had checked in What's this charge I see on my card for $189? It's $189. What I say, church? $189. Now, I had a whole lot of money on my cash app card, but I only had like $75 on my debit card. I explained all this to my mama. She said, well, when are you going to be able to put my money back on my card? At that moment, I said, mama, you called me about a month and a half ago, 
said you wanted 200 for two weeks and ain't never got me back that 200. Oh, so you want me to run down everything I done did for you, nigga, since you got an itemized goddamn list? I tell you what, with your 200 funk ass dollars, next time you need somebody to watch your goddamn baby, don't you fucking call me. I tell you what, with your 200 funk ass dollars, next time your black ass go to jail, you bet not call me. I don't give a fuck where you at and what you in there for. It's your 200 funk ass dollars. I tell you what, it is just a goddamn shame. I was like, boy! Ooh. Mama, I get paid for the show tomorrow. I can put the money back on there tomorrow. Well, that's all you had to say. You get your ass off my phone. 200 goddamn dollars. I was there. Clip, clip, clip. I just talk shit as you hang up, lady. All right, y'all ready to go? Let's do our toast. Y'all know what we do. Son Ed. Will, will, will Val bring us to me some whiskey? Boy, I, I want you to get you some therapy. You've been talking to me all night. Like this, a, like this was just a conversation between us. Boy, you got to get out more in 2023, boy. You was cooped up. You was cooped up. My nigga told me it was his birthday tomorrow. He said, like, I came up here just to see you. He, he thought, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Y'all ready? First toast of the new year. Man, um, is, is you, is, yeah, I've been saying, because if you're an undercover cop, you're not doing a good job. You've been standing there just looking at me all night. I've, he walked past me. I was like, no, nah, he ain't white. He ain't white. I forgot it's a whole lot of different indigenousness in Oklahoma. Yeah, he got he got two teaspoons of nigga on his grandmama's side. I know, I know it. I know it. He's been fist fighting his whole life for his complexion. I know it. When they be extra bright like that, they be black as hell on the inside. They got a black ass cousin like me that tried them their whole life. You ain't even black all the way. You the only one got to put on sunscreen. He just <laughs> violent. Who got they drink the needed one? Got you one? You slid in out of nowhere, brother. Good to see you, man. You need what you got to get you a drink. Appreciate y'all for coming. Thank you, everybody, for being here. You know, sometimes in life, you cannot pick your battles. You just going to have to show your ass up. Sometimes you didn't even know a fight was a brewing. You walked onto what you found out to be a battlefield. But just because you showed up in peace don't mean you have to leave that way. In other words, fight the fight that's fighting you. Meet your battle wherever it is. So you might not have a battle with addiction, but you might got one with lying. So you need to meet that battle where it is. Don't let your battle meet you. That's how you stay ready. Keep from having none. So whatever you fighting today, I encourage you to wake up tomorrow and fight it first. Don't give it a chance to sneak you. It just might knock you out. Well, that's all for me, y'all. I'm Black Run, man. Good night. Make some more noise for Mako. Give it up again for Black Ron. Thank y'all for coming.